Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is here now answering your planting garden questions. Our phones are still on the yes. fritz, so we have some Facebook questions. Yes. But first, we want to talk about some beautiful plants you brought. Yes, these are like <laughs> the prime of what we saw at the garden center. No, I had to raid the area where we pull things that are not doing well, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about some diseases. These are troubled plants. These are troubled plants. So something we're seeing a lot of right now is powdery mildew, now that it's gotten humid. And you can tell powdery mildew by, it get, looks like it's got spilled milk. So you get sort of a gray kind of, um, yeah, you can see it right there. Um, so that's a, it's a fungus. So you want to treat with a fungicide. I like Revitalize, which is a biologic fungicide. So just spray. It won't make it go away, but it will stop it. Okay. And the other big thing to do with it is at the end of the season when you clean up, make sure that you discard all of that foliage. Don't put it in your compost because it will overwinter. The spores will overwinter and then reinfect. Okay. Yes. Lovely hosta you have there. Yes, and this has got some um, <laughs> bug nonsense. It's either probably slugs or earwigs. And for that, we be now that it's, yeah. <laughs> Like Sluggo Plus. I love well, the they name. come out of the plus? Well, the plus, <laughs> the, the plus is for earwigs. You okay. can just get plain Sluggo, and just plain Sluggo just does slugs, but Sluggo Plus does slugs and well get, earwigs. You might as well get the plus. You don't always know what it is because they attack at night, so you can't really see them. Okay. And, and then what else do we have here? Tomato in our, rot? Yes, yeah, so we've had a lot of questions um, about blossom end rot. So this is something, it's a calcium treatment that you can spray on your tomato plants if the bottoms of them, where the blossom was, is turning black. Okay. So, yeah, and then just bug stuff and, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have some Facebook questions. want to start okay. here with Emily's? Start Emily. With Emily. Emily Hansel says, hi, I live in a cabin in the woods and it has overtaken our yard. I'm not really sure how to make it any less wild. Do you have any advice for getting her overgrown yard under control. Well, first I would start, Emily, by IDing what she has. There's probably a lot of invasive stuff like honeysuckle or um, burning bush, other kinds of uh, maybe barberries in there. So she should certainly start by, um, by seeing what she has and then removing the junk and then she can take a better look at what she wants to encourage. So the best way to get rid of those woody things is like um, stump kill. So you would spray that on a, or spray a, uh, paint it on a cut surface, a freshly cut surface. It'll take it into the roots and then kill the plant. That's really good for woody plants. She's probably also got some things like garlic mustard or that kind of thing in there. So first she's got to find her invasives and get rid of those okay. and then see what she's got big, left. Big project. It is a big project. All right, yeah. Han Hannah has a fern that's really dry in the center and bottom half. I water when the soil feels dry, but should I be watering it more? Plus, she has a peace lily <laughs> in a five-inch pot that seems to be overcrowded. Older leaves yellow and dry. Can I repot it? If so, when's the best time? So she can still repot now. You want to do it before the end of the month. As the days are starting to get shorter, it's better to plant when or to repot when the light is still high. Um, so she can go ahead and repot. I would say that might be the problem for the fern. Ferns like to be evenly moist. So if she's waiting for it to dry completely, it's probably not very happy. She's gonna wanna water that more often. If she's had it for a while, it might be that it's kind of root bound and there's not a lot of soil in the pot to hold the water. So again, that might be a question of repotting. And, and the peace lily, the brown leaves, is that from being too confined? It could be, it could also be a watering thing. It could be a light thing. Peace lilies don't like extreme temperature shifts. I know you have a mutant one that loves everything, but most of them <laughs> right are by, right by the heating and air conditioning I vent. know, I know. I don't flowers, know. flowers all year long. It does. You have a, Mark has a mutant peace lily. <laughs> and I'm proud of her. There you go. <laughs> all right. On to Naomi's question here. I bought two, how do you say that? Robinia? Robinia? Robinia palms about six months ago. Repotted them in a normal soil after I bought them. I watered them about once a week, and then within a month or two, they started turning yellow. Within three or four months, they were droopy and brown and wilted. What did she do wrong? Well, it's hard to say. That's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I would say <laughs> to email <laughs> some photos to the plant desk, plantdesk at brucecompany.com, so we can take a look. I, when she says normal soil, I don't know what that means. Does that mean topsoil? Does that mean potting soil? Generally, I would say when you buy plants, house plants, they are usually fresh from the grower and don't necessarily need to be repotted right away. We always recommend that people don't repot their houseplants right away. And palms are tough. Palms can be pretty tough, but there are some that are a little bit 
more fussy. So Naomi, email some photos to us. We'll take a look. Okay. Okay. And I guess we'll spray some more stuff here. <laughs> oh, what else do we have here? Captain Jack's dead bug. Okay, so this is a really good thing for Japanese beetles. So it's considered organic. It's um, made with spinosad, which is something that disrupts their digestive system. It doesn't work right away, so it's not an on-contact killer. But this year, given that the Japanese beetle population, knock on wood, so far seems to be not as high as usual, this would be a really good way if you wanted to do something organic and you didn't want to be spraying insecticide. Because I did bring over there, and I didn't bring it, um, a monarda or a bee balm, and even though it's got mildew and a really bad case of leaf spot. It was loaded with bees, and as I carried it into the guard center, the bees were trailing the, after the, me. The bees don't care. Oh. So the bees, well, they would care about spraying them with insecticide. Yes, absolutely. So that's what I'm saying. This is a really good option. Keep it, it natural. It seems like the pollinators are really active right now, and so keep it natural if you keep can. Keep it natural, absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right, Lisa, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. We'll see you in a couple weeks. You're traveling. I am traveling, yes. And so, so I could do a call-in we next phone, week. Our phones don't work. Well, we can't, we can't. It, I'm hoping in two weeks your phones will be working, right? <laughs> we do, we too. We hope so, too. <laughs> All right, Lisa, happy travels. Thank you. Well,